Hi guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com, and today I want to try something new. Now, I get lots of questions in the comments below my videos, and I try to answer those as much as I can, um, you know, with as much time as I have because that's what I enjoy doing. That's why I make these videos, is to give back to the community and you know, pass on this e-bike knowledge, because that's how I got it, was by learning from people that you know, knew more than I did. And so um, I try to answer these comments and these questions, but sometimes I find questions that A, uh, I think would be interesting to a larger audience, and B, it's hard to you know, give a concise answer in the format of a YouTube comment. So what I decided to do is I want to start making some video responses to some of the questions that I get from you guys. And to encourage you guys to ask these questions, I want to sweeten the pot a little bit. So what I'm going to do is anyone who asks a question and I choose it to make a video response like this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a free copy of the book I wrote. This is the Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide. This is a book I wrote. I uh, originally wrote it as a paperback and uh, I still have a few of these left. I uh, converted it over into an ebook because it's just so much easier for me to deal with than trying to you know, mail out a pile of these books. Um, and people seem to find it more convenient as well. But uh, this is a book I wrote. It's got basically everything I know about e-bikes in it. Um, you know, everything from choosing a bike, frames, to motors, controllers, batteries. Uh, it's like 200 pages, you know, tools, uh, wiring diagrams, um, soldering, uh, testing the hall sensor diagrams. I mean, basically everything here. Um, it's even got, this is kind of fun. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. I made this little flip book with the little guy I drew riding an e-bike. So when you flip the pages, it, um, you know, he rides along the bottom. So just the fun things you can do when, uh, when it's your book. <laughs> but anyways, I will send anyone who I choose to make a uh, response to their question into a video, uh, a copy of this book. So, um, today's question, and this is the first one I'm doing, this comes from Hello Chris, who asked, does he need to individually charge his 18650 cells before he builds a battery? And in his case, these cells have been sitting around for a while. So uh, the answer is sort of yes and no. Um, generally, it's no, assuming that you're using good quality cells. Like um, in all the, the battery building videos I've made, I always start with um, brand name, usually Panasonic or Samsung, uh, sometimes Sandia, which is Panasonic now. Uh, brand name, genuine cells. And when you're using uh, brand name cells that come straight from the factory, you don't need to charge them up all the way. And if anything, it's better not to. Uh, you know you're getting good cells, these aren't going to be duds because they're checked at the factory. And uh, if anything, it's better to keep them at a lower voltage so that when you're building your battery, if there is a short circuit or something goes wrong, there's less energy in the battery to basically overheat and uh, cause thermal runaway. Hopefully you don't get to that point, and I don't think you will, but just in case, it's better to not have a fully charged battery while you're working on it. Um, most cells ship from the factory at somewhere between like 20 to 50% uh, state of charge, which is usually about 3.3 uh, volts to 3.6, 3.7-ish. Um, and so that's a, good, you know, that's a good amount for the cells when you're building your battery. Um, what you do want to do is you always want to check the voltage of each cell, and you see that I do that in all my videos. I go through and I check every single cell before I uh, weld them in parallel or in series, and I make sure they're all within a few hundredths of a, of a volt. And the reason for that is to make sure that uh, you don't have cells that are going to try and charge each other. If you have one higher voltage, one lower voltage cell, and you weld them in parallel, the higher voltage cell is going to try to charge the lower voltage cell. And if it's a big difference, you're going to get a really big current flow as those voltages try to equalize, and that can be damaging to the battery. If it's really big, it can be unsafe and cause you know, thermal runaway, but uh, you probably won't run into that situation. It'll just cause some damage to the cell if it's a, if it's a decent sized current flow. Um, now, if you're using uh, non-brand name cells, you know, generics, or if you're using salvaged cells that you ripped out of like uh, old laptop batteries or out of an old e-bike pack, um, or basically any cell that it's not you know, a good new uh, brand name cell, you do want to uh, charge them all up and check their capacities. So I have this uh, capacity tester here. I'll put a link in the description. I think this thing cost me like, I don't know, 30, 35 bucks. Um, I don't think more than 40. And the idea is that you can take all your individual different cells, you load them in here, you can go up to four at a time, and uh, you test all of their capacities. Here I'll give you a readout. Um, exactly what their voltages are as it charges and discharges them. It'll tell you some of these, the internal resistance, but they'll all give you the capacity. And that way you can check all of them, make sure that they're holding uh, full capacity. 
when you're using salvage cells, you're probably going to find some duds, and you don't want to use those because one bad cell can bring down a whole parallel group, and that'll just ruin your battery. So for salvage cells or different cells, you do want to check them all before you use them, make sure that they're all holding capacity and they're all very similar capacities. Uh, at that point, I would recommend, uh, once you've you know, charged them all up, discharged them, tested them, uh, these things will usually charge them back up at the end. You probably don't want to build a battery with them all charged you know, fully to 4.2 volts. You can, you know, there's theoretically no problem with it. It's just, again, a safety thing. If you do accidentally cause a short and it's not you know, a momentary thing, um, you, know, you drop a big chunk of, uh, of nickel on top of the battery while you're working on it, or a, you know, a pair of pliers or something, and the thing just arcs and welds itself there, you would get a lot of current flowing uh, through whatever's making that short circuit, and that can be dangerous with a fully charged battery. So I would just use these things to, to discharge your cells again down to something like 3.3 volts, you know, something on the lower end of the scale, and make sure that they're all the same. Um, so, so that's about it. I hope that that answered your question, hello Chris. Uh, shoot me a private message here on YouTube, uh, send me your address, and I will mail out a copy of my book to you. And uh, anyone else that wants to check this out, um, you can go to uh, ultimateebikeebook.com and um, you, know, you can see the, uh, the ebook that I've, that I've got there. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you guys have questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. If I choose your question to make a video, then I'll send you a copy of my book as well. And, um, oh, and if you liked this video, you thought it was helpful, you thought I did a good job, just let me know by giving me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'll be honest, it makes me feel good. And uh, if you want to see more of these videos in the future, feel free to hit subscribe if you'd like, and uh, then you'll get a notification when I post new videos. Thanks for watching, have a great day.